So today I'm going to be talking about the most famed 35mm panoramic camera, the Hasselblad X-Pan. As you might know, it's a 35mm rangefinder with a mix of manual and automated operation. In my case, I first borrowed this from a friend a long while ago, thought I don't have any particular interest in shooting panoramic, fell in love once I actually had shot half a dozen rolls through the camera, and ended up buying one. It's an interesting beast, uh, manual focus, but automatic frame advance and uh, meter included. can also do auto exposure and it has an electronic shutter. As with all of my reviews, I'm going to go into the features of the camera and pluses, talk about some minuses, and in this case actually I won't have really any comparisons because I don't think there are any cameras that are strictly comparable. And of course I'm going to show you some results from shooting this camera in the field with a variety of films. Let's talk a little bit about the pluses and features of the camera. So first of all, the optics. It has three excellent lenses, a 45 millimeter, which if you do the math is a, like a 24, but subjectively feels maybe more like a 35 to me. Basically it's the height of a 45 millimeter frame, but twice as wide. And it's an excellent lens, super sharp, even by today's standards with the only real optical issue, quote unquote, being uh, quite a bit of vignetting, which I don't mind at all. Of course, as I've said, it's a panoramic camera. It basically shoots double with frame. You get about 20 to 21 shots per roll, which makes it reasonably economical, just a bit more expensive than 35 millimeter and substantially cheaper than medium format to shoot. You can mix in 35 millimeter frames if you care to do that, though I really don't know why you would if you spent X-Pan money on a camera. And because of that sort of cinematic wide frame, I find it makes just boring, regular, everyday life seem more interesting than it actually is. In terms of the characteristics of the viewfinder and the operating experience, honestly excellent. Super bright frame lines, really contrasty, beautiful rangefinder patch, and feels like a really professional build, uh, mostly titanium with a bit of plastic. Because of that titanium and the lack of brass that you'd find in a lot of Leicas, it's surprisingly light for shooting as large of a frame as it does, and it feels about the same to walk around with as a Leica. In terms of ease of use, it'll do auto exposure, so if you want to treat it almost like a point and shoot but with manual focus, you can do that. The meter itself is a simple center weighted average meter. I've had zero issues with it. I typically set it to half a stop or one stop over, and it just works. I realize some folks claim to not care about aesthetics, but many of us find the x to be a very pretty camera. It's also an absolute legend. Uh, you'll randomly talk to film enthusiasts sometimes about the x which is maybe fun, maybe not. And finally, rendering-wise, it's a super modern, sharp rendering.
So minuses. Um, the obvious one, well, there are two really obvious ones, one being the cost, although as long as yours doesn't die, you can resell it and get your money back. And the second being the electronic parts inside. So because of those electronic parts, gonna have a hard time getting your camera repaired. It will probably require a donor body. You might have to source that donor body yourself. And in case yours does die, you can sell it as a donor body. I checked eBay closed listings and the one I found sold for over $2,000 for a donor body. So even if yours does die, you can get some money back. It's a professional camera. I haven't actually heard that many reports of people's dying on them. So cross your fingers, you should be okay. But always worth mentioning with these electronic cameras that they have a limited lifespan and they won't be able to be repaired forever. Another potential downside, the lenses are not fast because they wanted that compact rangefinder feel. The lenses themselves are small and don't open up super wide apertures. If you look at most cinema, the depth of field is generally um, pretty open and you can actually see what's in the background, at least to some extent. So I don't mind that, but if you want super bokeh-y portraits with a weird uh, aspect ratio, I guess this isn't the camera for you. Next up, weird one, it's panoramic. Um, why would that be a downside? Well, you probably don't want to shoot panoramic all the time, right? So it's like, a, it's a camera that you will shoot in addition to a 35 millimeter camera and probably a medium format camera. It's, I think, a good second or third camera, but probably not a good only camera. It's a rangefinder with all the pluses and minuses of that. Um, I love to be able to see the world around the frame. That's a big plus. Um, but the downside is your framing won't be quite perfect, although I find it really good. There's also potential for rangefinder drift. Haven't encountered that. And rangefinders don't focus super close. But again, I think if you're shooting portraits with a panoramic camera, you probably want some background in it. So the fact that you can't focus super close isn't a big deal. All of the lenses vignette. There are center filters if you want to get rid of that, but of course it will slow your lens down. Personally, I like that, but you might not. Next up is paint chipping. If you are slightly stuck up and want that Hasselblad badge, it'll be painted over titanium. Titanium's notorious for not liking to have paint stick to it. Mine is a really clean example uh, with something like 20 or fewer rolls put through it when I got it, and I've put two, three dozen more through it since I've had it and you can see there are some minor scuffs on it um, so it's not in perfect shape despite not being used much a lot of these bodies that you'll see on ebay um, look like they've been through a war it's not because they've been abused necessarily just the paint doesn't like to stick if i remember correctly the fuji bodies and the x-pan 2 might not have as many issues with the paint but it's just an aesthetic thing next up scanning scanning these frames is a little bit more work generally you have to stitch um, if you send it to a lab you should just get double width scans at the same charge normally but um read the fine print in that case full res scans will be like 40 plus megapixels and they're beautiful you can print them super big
finally, let's talk comparisons. Again, there really isn't much to compare this to. I've seen some inexpensive Russian panoramic cameras that are supposed to be pretty decent. Can't comment on those in depth. Of course, there are the fake panoramic cameras that will block the top and the bottom of the frame. If all you want to do is experience what a panoramic frame is like, there are medium format cameras that will let you put in an adapter to roll a 35mm roll through as a panoramic, so the Mamiya 6 MF, and I believe the Mamiya 7 II do that. Finally, there are medium format panoramic rangefinders and maybe other types of cameras. Those are, however, pretty different because you'll only be getting something like three or four frames per roll, which as you can imagine would be really expensive cost per frame. Worth mentioning, there's also the Fuji TX1, which is the same camera, but I believe without paint. So it just has sort of a champagne quote unquote finish. And there's also the Xpan 2 slash TX2, I believe. And that has some very, very minor revisions, optically exactly the same. It does shoot the shutter speed in the viewfinder, which is really nice for automated exposure, but otherwise very, very minor tweaks. So in conclusion, the X-Pan. It's perfect at what it does. It's a beautiful camera. It just works. It's really lovely. The question I would ask yourself is, do you have enough other cameras? Are you actually going to enjoy it and use it? Or is it just going to be a novelty to you? If it's just going to be a novelty, Maybe try to convince one of your friends to buy one so you can borrow it and uh, save yourself the hassle. Does the fact that the camera might die at any moment and cost you a thousand dollars or something like that uh, bother you? Before I shot this review, I had been meaning to sell mine and I wanted to make this review before I did so. When I went out and shoot it, I fell in love with the camera again and was thinking, I was crazy, this is such a great camera, how could I sell it? And now, as I'm recording this video a month or two after I shot the photos, I'm back to wanting to sell it. I'd say this camera provokes emotions in people, and there's a sort of a visceral enjoyment of shooting it, and if you borrow one to shoot it, you might find yourself wanting one, so be careful. So that's about it. Um, hope you've enjoyed this video. All of my videos, music, photos, blah 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 are licensed under Creative Commons, so you're free to reuse them if you feel like it. I post about once a month. Feel free to subscribe and YouTube might recommend more videos to you. Otherwise, appreciate your taking the time to watch today and I will see you next month.